Mark Griffith here. Today we're going to take an image sequence like this. This is a time lapse and we're going to make it into a movie using Final Cut Pro X. There are a few tricks to this because Final Cut Pro is not the best at the job, but I will do my best to show you how you can come up with results like this. Let's go. Now we've got almost 3000 files here. Now Final Cut Pro, it's not really designed to do this, but it will do it. If you if you need it to um, first thing I want to change uh, this by the way is actually the video that you're watching right now that I'm editing so I'm just going to go to the end of it I'm going to put the time-lapse on the end here hopefully so I'm going to go to um, just our preferences first and I want to go to import and I want to select leave in place okay so I, I want to add these um, pictures to the library to one of our events and I, I don't want them copying um, across straight away I, I just want to be able to leave them in place to create my time lapse believe me it will slow down a whole lot if you do want to put it into your Final Cut Pro library add them to the event and then wait okay so we'll make a new event and call it uh, time-lapse demo open that event and then we're going to drop those images into that event so I'll select them all and then drag them across like so and we'll wait for it to validate those files and import them now even though we're leaving the original files in place it still wants to make probably a whole lot of little um, preview thumbnails and things like that for those images so it's probably going to read all of them anyway and just make sure they're all okay so we'll just kick back and wait a little bit for that okay so it looks like they've successfully imported themselves there now what I can do I can do a quick Apple A select them all and then just drag them straight onto the timeline because there are quite a few files here your computer may slow down a bit my system certainly is not the greatest right there we go they're all in the timeline now now <laughs> such a simple task took quite a long time we're dealing with 2900 images here so it does um, take quite a bit of time to do this and it's rendering away right now now while they're all collected um, selected still we can press Control D and that will set the duration for each of these frames and we want it, each of these um, images to be one frame long by default I think they're one minute long so we'll change that to one and press enter again we're doing an operation on quite a few files at once and Final Cut Pro 10 simply isn't very good at this task Let's just wait for it to finish thinking and to finish rendering before we go further. Oh no, she's good. She's behaving herself. All right, our last step. You can you can zoom in a bit there, but with these with all these clips already still selected, we want to go to our video properties up here. So it's dealing with again multiple files, so it's really really slow. But once we get this, uh, spatial confirm, it's currently set at fit. We want to make that as fill. Okay, so that will get rid of the black borders around the outside. We're zoomed in on, on the project at the moment. So, so that's in um, fit mode. So we change that to fit and then we let it do its thing and let it do its rendering. And then we'll be able to preview it. okay so it looks like that rendering has finished and I think it took around probably around 16 minutes I think which is a bit longer than using the FFmpeg method anyway now once that's done 
we can, we can play it back there. Let me move move my head. I can move my head. Oh, I can make my head disappear. Now, once that's done, of course, if you do any color correction or any sort of thing like that, it's going to have to apply that rendering again across the whole time lapse. Now, this is quite a long time lapse. Typically, you'd only use a, a few few seconds of this, but um, just by the nature of it, it, it's not individual video clips, it's like lots and lots of individual images. And our software is having a little bit of difficulty with it. Now, what I suggest you do, because normally you will want to move this around within another project or something like that, I um, suggest that you export this to its own standalone movie and then re-import it into into um, Final Cut Pro. So to do that we simply do an um, Apple E which is uh, the file export and then we just select our settings, um, select our codec I typically use for ProRes 422 and then hit next and then export and that will create our time lapse. Now this will take another 10 minutes or so to actually export. Um, it may not take that long but keep in mind when I used FFmpeg to do the same thing I went straight to uh, ProRes output and it took 12 minutes to do the whole thing and that was some um, scaling and everything to get the same result. So just keep that in mind. Final Cut Pro is capable of this but it is a lot slower. Okay, so another thing we can do, rather than render it out and bring it back in, if your time lapse isn't quite as long or as complex as this one, you can press an Apple A and select the, that will select all those clips again. Tick tock, tick tock. And then we can right click and create that as a new compound clip. Make that into a compound clip. So you can treat it as one entire clip and Final Cut Pro in theory shouldn't be falling over itself all the time to figure out how to render all these thousands of images in their, in their one little clip down here and do thousands and thousands of little thumbnails as well because I've got a feeling that where, that is where Final Cut Pro is falling over when it's dealing with lots and lots of little images like this. I'll just wait for that to finish what it's doing. Right, so now I can copy that and then I can paste it into my project of this, um, maybe not this video, but this this is the, the actual time lapse video that I was working on. I'll just paste that onto the end of the project there. There we go, that's almost workable. That's great. So that's treating it as, as its own little thing. and. Um, and I can just cut and just use the little bits that I want, like so. I can trim that down. And then I can do my color correction on that. Just change the contrast. Bump the saturation up a bit. There we go. Now that, I'm hoping, should render quite quickly. It's still rendering pretty slow because it's applying this color correction to each individual frame instead of um, instead of a, a clip that's um, 1080p clip. It's 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 uh, applying that correction to a 5k 5k image frames basically. So it is fairly slow, but at least the user interface isn't falling over because we've got this we've put this into a compound clip, which is nice. So. I can still continue to work on it and add it to projects. So there you go, uh, making a time lapse out of individual images in Final Cut Pro. Not the best way to do it. I strongly recommend spending a bit of extra time and learning how to use FFmpeg, which is much faster. Uh, Final Cut Pro is not designed to do this sort of thing. It's not designed to handle thousands of images and make them into time lapses. It just does not seem to work very well. As you saw, we got my little beach ball wheel of color of death going on there a whole lot. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like this content. I've got plenty of other advanced photography playlists and stuff like that on my YouTube channel. And please check out my professional channel, Biodiversity Shorts, where I learnt a lot of these um, techniques in the process of making of. Anyway, cheers. I'll catch you next time.